Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Makeout Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard. Yeah, Richard on the Makeout Forum. I'm Shannon. I check out the Makeout Forum. I forgot to mute the Twitch stream, so it was a <laughs> real weird intro. Gotcha. You had the echo effect going. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, today we're going to be working on something, well, we're going to be previewing something new. New, new. That is coming, coming, coming. Two, 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 arcade, arcade, arcade. Um, yeah, so we're on beta today. If you want to follow along, you can go to arcade.minko.com slash beta. But this is the disclaimer we always give when you use beta. Don't work on projects that you started somewhere else. Don't work on projects that are really important and that you want to keep working because there is always a chance the stuff that you do on beta will break. So... Be careful, but feel free to try beta. Just don't do it for normal arcade stuff and make sure that, you know, any big project that you're working on, like this is going to be your next big game. Don't do it in beta. Yeah. Don't, don't even like open it in beta if you really can. <laughs> yeah. Um, we try to make sure things won't break, but they do sometimes. Can't yeah. guarantee it. So. All right. Um, and uh, we're working on something. Well, we got something really exciting coming um, that I haven't had the chance to play with yet because I didn't do it. It was um, uh, somebody else. Um, and uh, what this is, is um, we're adding some new properties to the sprite drop down. Um, and you might think, oh, that sounds boring. <laughs> but it's not. Um, OK, which, which sprite? would be good for this demo, do you think? Uh, ooh, one cat, dog, fish? OK, let's do cat. I like the cat. Cat. Cat's good. All right. So um, well, we actually have a few new things coming, so I think we'll just demo all of them today, because why not? Oh, yeah, but, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, but this is, I think, the most exciting. Um, so uh, let me get to where we're not setting X. OK, so I got my sprite here. That's nice. Let me make a background color just because I don't like it when it's all black. Orange. Okay. So um, we added some new properties to this drop down, and now there are SX and SY, scale X and scale Y. And so what these do is let me go ahead and just select scale X, um, and I'm going to set this to be 2. Look at that. My sprite got stretched. <laughs> and if I make the scale Y2, now my sprite is four times as big. And you can do um, even cooler stuff. So in addition to those, there's also um, uh, these um, scale blocks for setting both the scale X and scale Y at the same time. Um, which is useful because a lot of times you don't want to stretch your sprite. You just want to make it bigger. Um, and so if I wanted to, I could, let's put this inside of controller so we can just like watch it go. Um, I'm going to make it so that when on up is pressed, I think there's a change in here. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're going to change the scale by one. And when down is pressed, we're going to change the scale by negative one. Yeah, Unsigned Arduino asks, can it handle decimals like 0 0.5? Yes, it can. Look into the eye of the cat. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, you can, you can see what's really cool. You see it actually disappears when it goes to zero mm -hmm. um, because zero scale means, you know, nothing's there. Yeah. Um, and so you might ask, does this work with um, uh, collisions and tile maps and uh, overlaps and all of that stuff? Yes, it does. All that stuff works. So it is essentially like you're just taking your sprite and you're making it bigger. Um, so uh, that's not all, though. Um, there are some extra blocks um, that go along with this. And if you go into extensions, see we have this sprite scaling image not final um, extension. And if you uh, click this, <laughs> what's up? I don't think I saw the image before. Yeah. <laughs> um, it adds more. It's not going to be under more when it's final, um, but for now it's under more. Mm -hmm. We have some extra blocks like grow and shrink by 10% or grow and shrink by specific pixels amounts. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different games you can, I think you can do with this. Yeah. 
Um, so one other thing is you see this anchor parameter. Well, one thing that is very useful when you're doing this is, let's say we have a tile map. Uh, you know what, we're going to make a game real quick, and I'm going to show how this works. So we're going to create a tile map, and it's just going to be the size of the screen. So we'll do 10 by 8. What's up? That block looks different, Richard. I know you haven't gotten oh, this. But... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Wow, there's a lot of stuff, actually, to go over today that I wasn't even thinking about. Wait, what were you talking about when you said going over all the changes? Well, the changes to the image editor, Vivian stuff, my stuff. Oh, I thought you meant the tile map blocks, but also, sure, yeah, the image editor. Yeah, stuff. there's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to make some, like, no, I'll do the classic Richard block. Why not? Bricks? Hmm? Is it bricks? No, it's uh, it's uh, this one. Is it planks? No. Is it You're gonna pyramid? Wreck it. With shading yeah. on one side? Yes. That. Ah, okay. <laughs> classic. I feel like wooden planks is also very classic, Richard, though. Maybe. I feel like I, I only... Hmm? I, don't, I don't do that by itself, though. Whenever I do that, it's like I'm doing a building or something, you know? True, that's true. Or a train. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we're just going to make some ground. Put down here, turn this into a wall. And let's give our sprite gravity. So let me go ahead and set our AY to be the usual like 500. Mm -hmm. And there we go. All right, we're standing on the ground. So let's grow our sprite. I'm going to press up, I'm going to get bigger, and oh. <laughs> Go right through the ground. So um, that's because you may have seen this before when you were doing animations or things like that. Um, you need to, if you start overlapping with a wall, which you will if you change the scale, you're going to run into this thing where you're going to start clipping through the wall and you'll just fall through the ground. Luckily, though, we have this anchor right here. And if I change this anchor to be bottom, now when I get bigger, it's anchored on the bottom, so I'm actually, you can see, staying <laughs> cool. without falling. If, if I get too big, I will. I will still fall through, you know? Yeah. Um, because I'm, like, now hitting the wall on the top of the screen. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It looks like it is a little there's bit like a, Yeah, there's, like, a few pixels overlaps. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we should ask Eric about this later. Yeah. Like... Yeah, there's like a four Can pixels you, of overlap here. Yeah, and did you jump here? Oh, I didn't code jumping. Oh, didn't. right. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to see if the, the bounding box is also um, misaligned. I guess it must be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it is. Okay, so there's like a few pixels of overlap. Jump, jump, jump. Yeah, it seems like the hitbox is off just by a little bit. Mm-hmm. We'll talk to Eric about that later. It's probably easy to fix. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So okay, that's scaling, and I, I think that's the most exciting. Oh, whoops. I think that's the most exciting thing that's that's coming. But um, uh, there's there's other cool stuff coming too. Okay. So next, let's do what Shannon was talking about. Um. So um, you might have noticed oh, the time also, lapse block. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Unsigned Arduino asks, will there be rotations anytime soon? Rotations? No. <laughs> The problem with rotations is it uses a lot of memory. And so if you want it to be on hardware, it's not going to work. Um, because, okay, so here's the basic algorithm for rotating a sprite. It's hard to do because there are only so many pixels on our sprite, right? Um, and uh, it's hard to like get the information of like, is this a line? Is this just a random black pixel? What is it, you know? So the way that sprite rotation algorithms generally work is you take the sprite and you scale it up like four times. This gives you more information kind of for the rotation because now there's more pixels. A line looks more like a line as opposed to just singular pixels. Then you do the rotation and then you scale down. But when you do that first step of scaling up, you now have a much bigger sprite that you're holding in memory. And that'll make it so that, you know, if you're on hardware, there's a good chance your game will crash. Um, 
So, yeah, that's why that you probably won't see that in the main one now. You'll have to keep using Joey's extension. Um, anyway, um, let's look at the other thing we got. So um, we've made some changes to the tile maps category. So, well, scene category. <laughs> um, so first things first, tile map is now drag outable, like from the tile maps extension. Um, so this won't, all, all these changes, by the way, will not affect existing games. They'll still work exactly the same. They'll still have the old tile map block. This is only for new games you create. Um, so, you know, we want to do this for a long time. Now you can have an, a, an array of levels if you want, or you can put a level in a variable, all sorts of stuff. Um, so hopefully that will, you know, make things cooler. Those of you familiar with the tile maps extension, um, it's a lot of that stuff from that now yeah. here. A lot of what we're doing is we took the most useful blocks from the tile maps extension and we put them into the scene category. And mm -hmm. as a result, once this stuff is released, the tile maps extension is going to get a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. Only going to be a few things left in it. Um, okay, so next we have, let's see, I don't think these are new. Um, okay, we have the location of my sprite. The yeah. name has changed a little bit. And we also have the getting the column row X, Y, left, top, right, bottom of a location. Mm -hmm. Which is nifty. Um, and then we have, uh, let's see, we now have tile at arbitrary location is wall, which we didn't have before. <laughs> um, uh, we have, these are the same. Tile at um, arbitrary location is blank might be new also, right? No, I don't think that one's new, okay. actually. I think okay. I think we already had that one. Nice. Um, and then we have uh, tile map location blank direction of location. So, you know, left, top, bottom, right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have tile image um, at this. This is, is this one new? This one might. Yeah. Uh, left is definitely new and image. This one's definitely new. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about this one. Too. Okay, okay, cool. So this one's new too. So this gives you the image of the tile, which is yeah. useful sometimes. Like maybe you want to turn it into a sprite so you can do something. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you want to take a like tile and make it spread out or something. All sorts <laughs> of stuff. And so you also notice that the everything's gone rearranged a little bit. The camera stuff is now up at the top of the scene category, which is um, because it's you know so useful. It was at the bottom before. Um, and then all the tile map stuff is at the bottom just to make sure that it's all kind of together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. So next up, let's go into the sprite editor. I want to get a big sprite. So let's go to set background image too. Big, big sprite. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just going to draw something random. Not big cat. Um, oh, okay, I'll turn this into a big cat. <laughs> Big pink cat. Excellent cat. Thank you. Oh, and San Arduino asks, do you think you could add rotations in the art editor so that we could store images in Flash instead of rotating manually? Ah, uh, yeah, so it's too bad Vivian's not here. <laughs> um, we planned on doing that, and I think it's still planned to be done at some point, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be in this release. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Um, tell me, has this ever happened to you? You draw your nice complicated sprite, right? And then you want to outline it. You have to outline it because someone on the stream didn't tell you that it needed to have an outline, mm -hmm. but it does need to have an outline. Mm -hmm. All right. So wouldn't it be great if you could just do this? Nice. Yeah. Okay. So what is this? All right. Um, so we added new keyboard shortcuts, and I'm going to write up a post explaining all of these. And these are also going to change a little bit from what they are right now, because they, it turns out they clash with a lot of the keyboard shortcuts <laughs> that are in 
Firefox. Oh, Shannon, you can't see my screen. That's why it's taking you so long to react to stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm watching the, the Twitch stream. Oh, all right. Well, let me fix that. <laughs> Do, do, do. There you go. Is that better? Uh, yes, yes. I see it. <laughs> good. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, so, uh, how does this work? Okay. So, um, right now it is control, shift, and then a number. So, one through nine, A through F. So, hexadecimal number. Um, and the, whatever you do, like one would outline with white. Two would outline with red three would outline with pink. So whatever the color is, there's obviously no control shift zero because you don't want to out, it doesn't make sense to outline with transparency. I just had an idea. Yeah. Which is you could do a control, you could do like a shift outline and it could just outline using your primary color. Hmm. True, we could do something like that. Maybe we'll That's add that as an additional command. Um, <laughs> We can have all of these. We've got plenty of things. Yeah. So right now it's control shift plus a number. It's just going to be shift plus a number later um, because mm -hmm. I'm changing it because it, it's it's clashing with a lot of the keyboard shortcuts in Firefox specifically. It works fine in Chrome, but Firefox has a ton more keyboard shortcuts apparently. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and you can just like, you know, keep doing it if you want. Make like a really psychedelic cat. Nice. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Um. And so uh, 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 the other thing that we added, we added another keyboard shortcut, which was uh, something I've wanted to do for so long, um, <laughs> which is uh, replace color. So let's say I want to turn all this pink into another color. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select pink to be my background color. So this one right here. And I'm going to select blue to be my foreground color. And now I'm going to do shift R. And now I've replaced all of my background color with the foreground color. So um, this, these also work with um, the marquee tool. Oh, look, that's something else we're going to show off in just a second. <laughs> um, but uh, so if I wanted to just replace the color within this rectangle, we do shift R, it's going to replace it just in the rectangle. Everything else is going to be left, you know, unchanged. Um, From chat. Um, will you be able to change the thickness of the outlines? Just wondering. Change the thickness of the outlines. No, but you can always just outline multiple times. Oh yeah, great point. So, yeah, the easiest way to do that is just do, you know, control shift FF. Now you've got a two pixel outline. So mm -hmm. one. Um, all right, cool. So um, we've got one other change and um, this one was done by Vivian. Um, who's unfortunately not here today, but um, let's go ahead and go into here and we're going to make this a much larger thing. So let's do like, I don't know, 48 by 48. Okay, move this guy down to the middle. And you probably noticed these um, white things on the edge here. So these are resized. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, if you don't want to scale your sprite um, in your game, you just want to resize it now, you can go ahead and select a part of your sprite and um, resize that chunk. So, you know, you can get really weird with this. You can even go smaller, which has some interesting effects. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and you can see it, it's doing decimal resizes. So, you know, it doesn't need to be a multiple of your, your sprite All right. size. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you ever drawn something and been like, oh man, if only this could be like 5% wider to fill this space. Yep, you can just use this now. And it, I think it does a pretty good job. It looks good, of, I think, yeah. Yeah, of like, you know, figuring out what it should be. Um, that looks like Ollie now. Yeah, I bet, yep. Very rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie's a big cat. He's not a fat cat. He's just a big cat. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like, it's all muscle. Um, <laughs> I feel like auto is all muscle. Yeah, maybe just by, um, you know, nature of, of being much smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm feeding him more though, so he's, he's fattening up. Yeah, also just like by nature of being more acrobatic. Could be. Yeah, he, he, he definitely does more, um, 
works out more than Ollie yeah. does, I would say. Um, uh-huh. he, he just runs around all the time. All right, look at this cool game we've made. I think it looks great. Yeah, you know, it doesn't do it's much, but about... it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's a game about finding, encountering your inner cat, the cat yeah. of the soul. Mm-hmm. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like how this okay. background cat, the eyes are like exactly over this guy when you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, real quick, I'll show that double outline thing we were talking about. Um, oh, yeah. So, oh, whoops. Um, keyboard shortcut. Oh, man. We need to fix this. I think this you're thing. highlighted the... Yeah, it is. I don't know how to fix that. Do you? That's tough. Like, a, I know there's a way, but... Is there? Like, by forcing... <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. All right. So, um, if I want to outline twice with pink, I will do shift three, three. Now I have a double thick pink outline. I just keep going. <laughs> um, so, cool. All right. So I'm going to be making a forum post detailing all of this stuff later once this is released. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to have a documentation page that talks about this and lists all of the keyboard shortcuts. If you have any other ideas for keyboard shortcuts that would be useful, that you would really like to see, that you think are missing, let us know. Um, uh, keyboard shortcuts, as opposed to UI elements, are really easy for me to go in and add. Um, depending on what the feature is. So, um, you know, you should let us know and maybe we can sneak it in. Depending on what it is. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So that was 25 minutes. Um, do you want to make a... Lot. Yeah, we, we have. Is there, is there anything I'm forgetting? Um, I don't think so. Oh, there's the wall thing in tile maps, but... Oh, yeah, very, very boring. Um, but also, replace color useful. works in tile. Very, yeah. yeah, it is useful. Replace color works in tile maps, tile maps as well. Um, so same thing. You That's just select one to be your background. Yeah. You select one to be your background. You select one to be your foreground. And then you can do a replace just like you can in the image editor. Outline does not work because it doesn't want to make sense. Um, OK. Um, and for wall tool, and get ready, guys, to, you know, Hold on to your socks because otherwise they're going to be knocked <laughs> off. Mm-hmm. Um, if you click on walls, it turns on the wall tool. If you click the wall tool again, it goes back to the tile tool. Oh. Um, which is obviously a minor thing, but it's pretty nice in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, one other thing, the resize does not work in the tile map thing editor because, again, it just doesn't really make that much sense for tile maps yeah. um, as opposed to images. But it will work in the tile editor. Those things will all work in the tile editor when you're making a new tile. All right. I think that's everything. Um, so uh, when will this be coming out? Um, in the next couple weeks, probably. Don't hold us to that because obviously these these dates can change, but mm-hmm. that's the plan, you know. Yeah. Um, and we're probably going to be doing all of our streams in the next week on beta. So I'm hoping we'll just make a bunch of scaling games because there's so much fun stuff we can do with scaling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. And speaking of that, um, let's let's do that. Let's go ahead and make a scaling game. But yeah, I have an idea for one, but do you have an idea for one, Shannon? Um, not really. I have like a very like a small one mechanic one, but it's boring. You should do yours. Mine's a boring one mechanic one also. <laughs> Okay, well, here's mine. Okay. I want it, and you're going to have to help me with the art on this. Um, there In Super Mario 64, okay, there's this thing where the start screen has Mario's face, mm-hmm. all right? And you can grab parts of his face and stretch them. And then when you let go, they just, like, go. F- <laughs> mm-hmm. So would you be willing to draw some face parts? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, so we're going to make a game where you can move around a hand and you can grab parts of a face like the eye or the nose or something and they'll, you can stretch them um, and maybe we'll do the snapping back to place also but I don't know cool Gideon sent us um, some art I think that it's just like like art but um, it's like what? just art to look at Okay, let's look at it. 
Whoa! It's rocks, but he's got like an aura now. <laughs> rocks. Want to learn more about? Yeah. If you want to learn more about rocks, play Make Code Slam. Um, watch watch our streams where we make Make Code Slam. We've had been having a lot of fun with that game. This guy's character in it. All right. So let's head on over to the editor. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is this is a game that's going to require a cursor. So let's make a cursor. Um, so let's go right here, make a new kind. It's going to be cursor. For some reason, I never like making my cursors kind player, even though that makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's like cursor is just the thing that's very like kind B. Yeah, I think so. Kind. Um, OK, we're going to do a hand, and it's not going to look weird at all. <laughs> I believe in you. I don't know if you should. Well, I'm doing it, so. Stop. Stop doing it. <laughs> hey, when did the Olympics start? We should make Olympics games. February 4th? We should make Olympics games. That would be great. Yeah, I want to make a curling game. Oh, I was. Well, I'm going to invent an Olympics game, so you can. Oh. Okay. I just kind of want to make curling. No, curling game would be fun. I think. Oh. Yeah. But I'm thinking on my Winter Olympic game. Okay. All right. There's, I need. To, give me a second to like fix the stuff on my desk, which is getting in the way of me moving my mouse. <laughs> I have been cleaning some stuff up, and you know. Things get messier before they get cleaner. Okay. Uncentered Uno has a great idea, which is when will we add um, a pointer cursor and a hand cursor to the assets uh, page? I think the gallery. Um, I think that was in the request we made to our sprite artists at some point, but it got pushed because they had more important things to work on. Yeah. So it would be we super should. Super useful though. It would. Maybe maybe one of us can just draw a nice one that we can just Ooh. put in the gallery. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. feel like either of us could probably imitate. We have like the buttons and stuff to go off of. Buttons and stuff? You know. Oh, you mean the ones that are in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To like copy the style of. Yep. Okay, I think this is the best hand I've ever drawn. It looks really what? good. I, I feel was like right. I did the same thing that I normally do. <laughs> All right. And why does this one look normal? And the other ones always look weird. I just don't get it. I feel like with hands, the proportion, like, you know, the one pixel wider or like the fingers one pixel deeper or shallower it makes a big difference. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, so let's move with buttons. On Saturday Night it says, with the new scaling, you can scale up an explosion. So when you fail at curling, you die. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> so some other fun things that you, you can do because it works with tile maps. You can like make it so this was this was um, the person who made this um, his his example for everything was like he had a platformer where you had to make yourself bigger so that you could jump over things that you wouldn't be able to jump over as a small sprite, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really fun. Um, and, you know, so it's usually most useful to scale in both directions, but you can also just scale in one direction. So you can also do really cool visual effects. Or you can just make them, you know, you can turn um, a, a, a duck into a surfboard. I don't know. Um, wait, so. wait, what? You can turn a duck into a surfboard. With skill? Yeah. Grab a duck. Go right here and do my sprite two. Set the scale X to be seven. Duck surfboard. It is a surfboard, you're right. Yeah. It feels a little cruel. I don't know. How does the duck feel about this? Well, I mean, if I was given the ability to transform into a surfboard, I would use it. Mm. I might look weird, but <laughs> I mean, it, I feel like sometimes it would be applicable. Mm hmm So yeah, may maybe. Well, you don't like bodies of water, so probably That's not. That's true. But I feel like I would still find use for it at some point. You could like, maybe I need to sit, get through something. No, they have that fence sticking out the back, so it doesn't really make you that much thinner. 
I was gonna say you could surfboard down like a flight of stairs, and that might be kind of fun. True. Um, I could camouflage myself in a surf shack. True. Yeah. Nobody would find you. Be like, whoa! How many of these do you sell? Like, I've never. This is like some sort of cursed object. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we got this move with buttons thing, and um, Shannon, were you here yesterday? Yes. Uh, no, wait. Right, I yeah. I was not. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering if you were here when we discussed the fact that Vivian has a painting that ages in her basement instead of her. I was She's actually there. 87 years old. I was listening for the first half of the stream, maybe. Okay. I mean, it's not really important that you know about that fact. I was just thinking about it. All right. Thinking about cursed objects. Um, okay, so so until we have some stuff to stretch, we're just going to stretch some pizza. Oh, yeah. What um dimensions do you want things to Anything be? Anything you want. It's gonna, it should take up the screen. No, it should. It doesn't need to take up the whole screen. It should take up a fairly, like, a good portion of the screen okay. altogether. And then do you want separate sprites for each, like, part? Or, okay. Um, okay, so we're, we're going to stretch this pizza. Um, let me go ahead and set the Z index on my cursor to be higher. Um, all right, and I'm going to add a kind for this that's going to be stretchable. I'm just thinking about what kind of face. Mm, okay. Yeah, th that's important. It's going to really set the tone for the game. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we're going to need the extension to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and add it right now, this sprite scaling extension. You won't see this in non-beta arcade. It's only in beta arcade. Um, okay. So the, the basic idea here is... Um, we're going to make it so that when we press A and we start dragging, we're going to decide a stretch point. All right. So we're going to be dragging here, and whichever direction you go is going to determine where the stretch point anchor is. All right. So if I was like grabbing here and like I went to the right, then I'll make the top left. So it, I think it's just going to be whatever the farthest corner away from the hand is. Let me think about that. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just the farthest corner away from the hand. Yeah, I think so. Um, and uh, we're going to use that corner as like the uh, um, stretching thing that we can um, use. Um, can you tell our manager that I am on a live stream call right now? Yes. Is our manager attempting to contact you? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to, uh, so we're going to like, Make it so that when you press A, we're going to start our stretch. Um, so first, we need to figure out which sprite we are overlapping with. So we're going to loop over all of our sprites of kind. Stretchable. And we're going to say, are you overlapping with? My sprite, which let me go ahead and rename this to be the cursor. Um, <laughs> so. Our manager wants to know if you're going to do um, the tech talk today. Sure. Um, OK, um, and so we're going to, um, if this happens, we're going to break, because this sprite right here is going to be the sprite we are stretching. And we're going to go ahead and set that as a variable. We're going to say sprite we are stretching we're gonna set that to be value and we're gonna set um, are we stretching we're gonna go ahead and set that to be true oh I should um, have done this beta I need to make my spike bigger and now I can't <laughs> <laughs> You can always copy and paste and just go over to beta. 
Okay, and we're going to stop stretching when we release A. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, on A button released. We're going to set are we stretching to be false. Um, okay, so um, now we've got the sprite that we're stretching. We need to take the point that is going to be our stretch point, and that's going to be our anchor. So um, we have four different anchors. We have um, top left, top right, bottom right, um, bottom left. And so we're going to uh, number them just like that. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Um, and we're going to number them because we need to choose our anchor, not in this one. We want to choose our anchor inside of this one. Um, and we're going to be using this grow by blank pixels, um, which if you hit the plus also has an anchor. So um, to make this happen, we are going to, let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? Um, does Arcade Sprite Util have a distance? It does, right? I think so. Uh, yeah. I'm not like super familiar, but I feel that this is true. Arcade. This feature is being so, so useful right now. When you have to draw a bunch of separate like parts that need to be match, you know, like on a face, it's good to be mm -hmm. able to resize things. Sure. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a bunch of, um, we're going to loop over all the different possible stretch points of our thing. And I'm wondering, should I support all of the stretch points? Why not? Let's shoot for the yeah. stars. <laughs> so we're not going to do middle, but we'll do top left, right, bottom, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. <gasps> oh, Vivian's here. It's Vivian. Hi, guys. Sorry for coming late. It's okay. <laughs> We're just glad you're here. Oh, okay. Great, great. I was like, oh, Hassan has, has set a precedent for coming in late, but I've never set a precedent. Can I just jump in? Mm. No, it's good because we do, Hassan will get away with a lot of things that you can't. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We've been talking about you so much this stream, Vivian. So it's easy. have you? Because I've been watching for a bit, and I have. Okay, I did hear about the painting. Wish we didn't bring that up again. Again, <laughs> we're gonna start breaking into my basement. Um, no, we were talking. We we demoed all of the new features that are coming, and um, we were doing your sprite resizing. I heard Shannon needs to be on beta. Yeah. Yeah, I moved to beta. Oh, excellent! People are pretty excited about it. I'm excited uh, too. Yeah. Um, and also, we had a question about sprite rotation. Rotation's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the way that we do our marquee tool, because our marquee tool is just going around the squares. Yeah. So we might do it eventually, but it's not going to be in this release, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Not, not in this release. <laughs> All right. And... I, I was going to say probably not by me, but maybe I'll do it. I was just feeling, feeling lazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we're going to – actually, I'm going to make a function for this. This is a silly function, but we're going to make make target. Um, this is going to take in a few things. It's going to take in a, um, let's see, uh, anchor sprite. So do this. I'm going to name it anchor. It's going to take in a um, dx and dy. So we'll do dx. DY, and it's going to take in a number, which is going to be the anchor number. And so the idea is I'm going to make um, a stretch target for each of our corners. Um, and I'm just making this function to make it a little bit easier. So we're going to create a sprite right here, and we're going to go ahead and make this of kind stretch target. Like this. And we're going to set its position to be the position of our anchor. So let's put our anchor right there. Plus our DX. And the anchor Y plus our DY. And now I'm going to add sprite data. Guys, I've drawn an eyeball, and it might be a little bit upsetting. I, it's hard to tell. I have to make a face. The face has to have oh, yeah. on it. Oh yeah, Vivian, you have to do this too, actually. So, do you know what game we're making, Vivian? 
You're doing the Mario stretching thing. Yeah, so can you make a face? We're having two faces? Yeah, why not? Oh, because it's bad to be two faced. You should be one. <laughs> well, just make it so that there's a 50% chance when the game starts of you getting one face or the other face. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, I'll make one then, I guess. I'm just hanging out with Chad. I'm sorry. Now you're working. Fine. Now I'm working. Shannon, how big is your face? Not your um, face, face, but your. Sorry. You probably don't need to clarify, but just in case. I have a 54 by 54 space that I'm working in, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 54 by 54. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to create eight anchors, which are going to be all the corners and the middles of all the sides. Um, so uh, we're going to start in the top left and number from there. So the first one's going to be zero. And for that one, we're going to do um, negative half the width. So go ahead and do, uh, let's see, I want the property width. Divided by two. And I probably could have structured this code to be a little bit easier. I'll use value because it's um, not as long. Divided by two. And we'll go ahead and put this in here. And we need this to be negative. So we're going to make this negative two. And for the height, we're going to do, um, for I mean, for the y, we're going to do the height negative divided by two. And um, for the anchor, we're just going to do zero. So let's go ahead and duplicate this a bunch of times. That is a bunch. Them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to number these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, OK, so um, we got this one. We're going to go ahead and do um, the middle now, the middle top. So we're going to change the DX to be 0, leave the height as the same. Then we're going to do the um, uh, like top right. So the X is going to be positive. Um, the height's going to be the same. Now we're going to do just the right. So this is going to be positive. This one's going to be zero. Sorry, not top right, middle right. Now we're going to do bottom right. So both of them are going to be positive. So positive two, positive two. Now we're going to do middle bottom. So that width is going to be zero. Height's going to be positive. Um, now we're going to do bottom left, so negative x, um, positive y, and now we're going to do just left, so negative x, 0, y. All right, now we're going to overlap with our stretch pool and press A, and yeah, cool, we worked. That worked. So we've got our um, stretch, stretchable targets right here. Um, so why did we do all of that? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to loop over um, the thing, and we want to find the one that is farthest from our hand, and that's going to be our anchor. So we're going to um, loop over all of these guys. So let's do a four of. Target goes in here. And this is going to be array of all sprites of kind stretch target. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we need to figure out the min distance. I'm sorry, the max distance. So um, max distance, distance. And we also want to set um, the farthest sprite. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to, for each of these guys, do if distance between greater than make this target make this value make this max distance Then we set max distance to be 
this distance. And we set the farthest to be the target. Um, and uh, wait, what, what, what? Oh, uh, whoops, I dragged that out. There we go. Um, and we want the, um, oh, we're setting it to be zero up here. We don't want to do that. Um, and um, now we can just go ahead and destroy these sprites. We just wanted them so we could easily get the distance. Um, and now we're going to make a variable called stretch anchor. And we're going to set our stretch anchor to be the sprite data of whatever, which, whichever one we just chose. So farthest data, what did I call it? Anchor. And there we go. All right, so now we have our, our stretch anchor. Um, there's one last thing we have to do. We need to store our start X and start Y. So do start X, we're going to do start Y. Um, and we're going to store those. At, we're going to set those to be the x and y of our cursor. And then finally, I think the thing we're going to do last is we need to store our start scale x and start scale y. Okay, so we're going to set the um, start scale X to be the scale X of the sprite we are stretching. And we're going to do the same thing for scale Y. All right, now that we've done all of that, What we're going to do is um, an on game update. And inside of here, we're going to do um, if we are stretching something. So um, we have a variable for that. If, um, let's see, are we stretching? Then we're going to set, we're going to use the, um, ex oh, first we need to set reset the scale. So we're going to set the scale to be our start scale. Um, so we're going to do right here set um, sprite we are stretching. Scale X to be the start scale X and set the scale Y to be the start scale Y. Um, and then we're going to use um, the uh, extension blocks right here and do um, grow. Ooh, yeah, yeah, this is fine. Um, we're going to grow the sprite we are stretching by however many pixels we have traveled. Um, so we're going to, let's see, do some math. We just want to do the sprite x minus, the cursor x minus our start x. Um, and then we're going to do um, cursor Y minus start Y vertically. Um, and let's let's just try this real quick. So now I'm going to go ahead and stretch like that. We're not using the anchor yet, so you can see it's just kind of like stretching in the middle. Oh man, some weird stuff is happening. <laughs> That's weird. All right, we're gonna we'll do something to correct for that, but um, for now it's fine. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and use that anchor we have. Um, so we're going to um, make a function, I think, which is going to be called stretch. 
Um, it's going to take in an anchor, and it's going to take in a stretch sprite to stretch, um, and it's going to take in a um, stretch x and a stretch y. And now we're going to call this function. Do, 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 right here. Take this out. Um, and we're going to stretch the straight sprite we are stretching. We're going to pass in our change in x and our change in y. Um, and for the anchor, we're just going to use that variable we have. So stretch anchor. Get that. All right. And now um, let's go ahead and write a really big if statement. It's going to have eight cases. Not counting. We'll see if I got it right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One off. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. This is fine because the last one's seven. So that was perfect. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Great. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put in these um, stretching things. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this and put in two stretch. Um, then we're going to put in stretch X and stretch Y. We're going to expand both of these, and we're going to do start from the top left. So um, our first one's going to be top left, both of these. Then um, our next one is going to be um, uh, middle. So that's just top, middle top. And our next one is going to be top right. Um, and then our next one is just going to be right. Um, and then next we're going to do, uh, let's see, bottom right. Ah, bottom left. Ah. Oh, I messed this up. And now we'll do um, just bottom. Now bottom left. And now top left. Not top left, just left. Uh, and this needs to be horizontally. Um, OK, let's see how this goes. I called this, right? Yeah, stretch. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull. Oh, whoa. 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 <laughs> yeah, there might be some bugs in this. Part of the reason why it's always important to keep in mind that this is beta. Um, OK, so we're going to do one other thing, which is we have our anchor sprite, all right? And we're going to use this to re-anchor our sprite. So we can go ahead and correct this. So um, we have a little bit more tedious code to write. So you'll just give me a second. We have two stretch, and we need to set the um, left to our anchor sprite left. So let's go ahead and grab that. Is named farthest. Here we go. And we're going to do the top now. And instead of doing what I was doing before and just double copying things, we're going to do our fun little trick where we put these inside of a if statement for no reason and just do paste, 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 paste. There we go. 
Okay, so if this, this is um, just top, so we want to set the x to be the x and the top to be the top. Okay, next we want to do the top right, so set right to be the right and top to be the top. Okay, next we want to do just right, just right. So we'll do right, right, and we'll set this to be the y. Next, we want to do bottom right. So we want to do right, right, and then bottom, bottom. Next, it is just bottom, so we want to set the X to be the same, and then bottom to be the same. All right, and then next we want to do bottom left, so we can leave this left one. Yay. Just set the bottom. And then finally we want to do just the left, so we want to leave the left one again, and we will set the Y to be Y. And this should take care of that drifting problem we had. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I did that one wrong. All right, we'll fix that. Oh, I see. Okay, so negative doesn't work quite right. Mm -hmm. Is this um, getting the points like that? No, they're supposed to be getting destroyed. I think I forgot to destroy them. Oh, okay. Hmm. Aren't I destroying them right here? Oh, that's only if the distance is greater. Okay, we need to pull that out. There we go. Nice. Oh no, is this this is this is actually working correctly? It's the negative direction in either, I think, right? Yeah, Positive you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's doing like a negative scale, but it should instead be doing a positive scale in the other with the anchor switched. Wait, say that again. It's doing a negative scale, like it's scaling it negatively, which is shrinking it. But instead, it should be doing a positive scale, but with the anchor on the other side. So what it should be doing is, based off the code I wrote, is it should be setting the anchor to be whatever is farthest away from the hand. So here, the thing that's farthest away from the hand will be up here, right? And so this makes sense. OK, but if I were to grab it up here, then it should be anchored from like down here and it should be going up. But no, it's oh, setting the same anchor. I see. Yeah. So um, we need to take a look at that. So if distance between target and let's see, value is greater than the max distance, then we set the max distance to be the distance between the target and value and we set farthest to be the target. Let's see, that seems right to me. Maybe it's just something that have to do with when when the grow is a negative value. Maybe I, I I figured grow was just negative shrink, but do they do different things? Why is the grow a negative value though? It should be growing positively. Well, no, because if I move towards it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you're, you're, that you're right. That like should this, be positive. Yeah, this should be positive. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see what we're doing here. We're going to, um, inside of here, we're going to, um, and it, you, you can tell it is doing the wrong anchor because it should be realigning. So it's definitely a problem with the anchor selection code. Vivian, you're making a face. Is this? Oh, oh, 
Whenever I draw things, I'm usually making the face I'm trying to draw. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Which is hard because when I'm like angry, when I'm drawing myself angry, I'm going to go like this. And then I get in a bad mood because I'm like frowning. But I'm not actually in a bad mood. Anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh, Shannon. Um, so if you go into the code, it's got each individual piece and then the positions for them. Okay. I'll send my so notes. Good. We're out of time. Sorry, guys. Oh, wow. It's two. Oh, wow. Oh. We are out of time. Oh, my gosh. And we have to go. Okay. We're going to come back to this game. Don't worry. Um, so let me just grab Vivian so we can look at it. But we're going to have to stop for now. Vivian seems <laughs> unhappy. Vivian. Oh, prepare yourself. <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> They're all individual pieces. That's great. This um, is going to be so right, fun to cool. stretch. <laughs> yeah. So, tune in next time. We're going to be doing some more work on this. Um, and uh, we're probably going to be doing scaling games all next week or so, because we're going to be using beta for testing. Uh, so, um, please tune in. It's going to be it's going to be a hoot. Um, in the meantime, I'm Richard, at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Shannon. I should count on the Make Code Forums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Vivian at Live Cheerful on the Make Code Forum. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. <laughs>